This podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to uh, Everybody Lies, our House MD podcast. Uh, my name is Mark. With me, as always, is my co-host, Mike. How you doing, Mike? Not too bad, Mark. How about yourself? Good. We've had a good week here. Uh, we're getting ready for our big break. Um, I was While we were waiting... Uh, I uh, I was looking through this BuzzFeed article. Um, I get these BuzzFeed articles. I don't know why. But, and obviously, you can't even call these things articles. They're just pictures. But this is the stupidest one I've ever seen in my life. It's the 23 most painfully awkward celebrity PDAs of the 2010s. And it just goes through. It's like pictures of these celebrities kissing. And it's like, Timothy Chalamet and Lily Rose Depp swallowing each other's faces, 2019. Shane Warney chewing on Elizabeth Hurley's lip, 2013. Sam Smith and Brandon Flynn consuming each other, 2018, which should be a picture of them swallowing each other's cocks, but they're just, <laughs> but they're just kissing. And it's like Janice. Is, is that? Yeah, go ahead. I mean, I wonder if someone's going to be upset by that because, like, I mean, I, I haven't seen these pictures. Like, mm. is it really, like, a truly, like, cringeworthy kind of thing? No, here's the thing that's stupid about it is, okay, do they look weird and awkward? Yeah, because they've caught them. Like, they, these pictures have been taken during a weird moment of kissing. You, you know, like, the kiss... Yeah, they're firing off, like, 500 shots, and this just happens to be one of them, probably. Exactly. Like, if you... If you, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. If you, if you did that, like fired off 500 shots of anybody doing anything, you'd catch some point where gravity or the angle or something like that makes something look weird. It's like, these are perfectly normal kisses. They're just, they're just at the, the, like the weirdest time. Cause like one's like oh, okay. Paris Hilton and Doug Reinhardt. I don't, I know who Paris Hilton is. I don't know who the guy is. Going in for a full mouth kiss, two thousand nine, and yeah, they look dumb because both of their eyes are closed and their mouths are open, and they're about two inches away from each other. But it was like, but it's like, who? And by the way, that's two thousand nine. Is it two thousand nine? It is not two thousand ten. So they've already violated their fucking their fucking title here. But it's like, <laughs> but it's like any. Two people would look like this if you if you uh, took a picture of them, you know, like right before they were going to kiss each other. So it's like how long so do you think stupid. it took them to slap this together? Seriously, it's the fucking. I mean, they, they five couldn't minutes. even find ten. They couldn't even find ten pictures from the right decade. Right. And they, they couldn't go back and change it to nine instead of ten. Yeah, God. They're like so. When we finally get into ones that I guess are kind of weird, like Kanye West doing a double cheek grab with Kim Kardashian in 2015, he's got his hand on, you know, both of her ass cheeks as he's kissing her, uh, apparently on the red carpet at the Grammy Awards. So, yeah, I mean, I get that that's probably maybe a little too far in public. Yeah, but I imagine just grabbing her in general, like, there's a good chance your hands are going to land on her ass. That's true. There's there, that. That's a lot of surface area. <laughs> it's like, you know, the Titanic, like, the old argument about that, you know, you can fit two people in there. I mean, how, where else are your hands going to go? Yep. No, I agree. Megan Trainer and Charlie Puth making Hendo? out. <laughs> making out literally for no reason, 2015. He also has his hands on her ass. But yeah, I mean, you know, most, I, I hate BuzzFeed a lot. Yeah, it's it's terrible. But yeah, most. What's funny is they, they are trying to have like a le- I'm sorry. Yeah, what's they also like are trying to have like a legit news arm. Like I think a major story was actually broken on BuzzFeed. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what it was. Um, but it was like it was something about Trump, I think, or something like that. But yeah, it's just like yeah, fuck you, BuzzFeed. It's like it's like the Inquirer like going out to have their own like you know serious news channel. It's like no, thank you. Okay, so now I know. Now I see why they did this. Uh, they did this for this one and only one thing. And they were like, we want to build an article around this. So let's, let's make, cause it's, this is the old number one is the only one that's a video and it does look really fucking weird. 
Uh, who, who are the participants? It says these virgins from the TLC show Virgin Diaries. Oh, I, I've seen that, I think. Yeah, that's very awkward. <laughs> yeah, they clearly don't know what kissing is. Right. Yeah, that's 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 an awkward one. It looks like two aliens trying to kiss. <laughs> So, yeah, they... Do the aliens look like hot guys? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> They're looking for more than a smooch. <laughs> uh, but uh, so clearly they, they, they had that video uh, up their sleeve and they were like, let's, let's slap together a bunch of other ones from the 2010s. And uh, someone's like, 2009, close enough? Yeah, that's good, fine. Now, quickly, we need to find a, uh, a, an accurate test to figure out which Disney princess you are. Yeah. God. BuzzFeed. Go fuck yourselves, BuzzFeed. Yeah, I, I hate them. Fuck them. Unless they want to sponsor right the show, in which case... Eh, that'd be like a Hezbollah sponsoring the show, in my opinion. <laughs> We'd probably take your money, too, Hezbollah. So. I would not. Oh, come on. Morals? What if it was a lot of money? No, probably not. Yeah, Mike doesn't really care about money, just so you guys know. Just to prove it, send me a bunch and I'll set it on fire. Exactly. Yeah, like uh, like Keith Ledger in The Dark Knight. And not... <laughs> Did you say Keith Ledger? <laughs> His brother? <laughs> right? <laughs> is that the one that... Uh, is, that is that the one that, uh, that uh, died from autoerotic asphyxiation? <laughs> uh, the other Olsen twin killed that one. <laughs> <laughs> They're so competitive, these girls. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh fuck. Allegedly. Yep. So uh house. I guess we should talk about house. MD. Speaking This episode is called Curse. Yeah. This sh- I guess we should have saved this for our Halloween episode. Yeah, it's spooky. But we didn't do a Halloween episode actually. No, I think we started this after Halloween. Maybe I don't know. No, no, no. The last one we we talked about like scary movies. Like last, I was saying this Halloween we didn't do anything. Oh yeah, yeah. We didn't do like a Halloween specific episode. No. No. No, we Which don't. Which is a shame. We don't. Yeah. I mean, next year we'll do a we'll do a spooky episode. No, we won't. Oh, actually, next year I already I already call it. We'll do the Boy Beats World Halloween episode. That's the worst fucking episode I've ever seen. Oh, yes. We definitely should do that. Yes. Uh, well, we can do that for dumpster diving during Halloween. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, this episode's called Cursed, and it stars... Speaking of uh, kids from the Disney Channel, uh, the guy that, that, like, gets... So this kid was in... I looked it up, because I was like, this fucking ginger fuck looks familiar to me. Yeah, I recognize him from Spy Kids. Yeah, that's where he's from, is Spy Kids. And a and bunch, also, bunch of other stuff, too. Yeah, my wife recognized him from Weeds, and we were both correct. He apparently played uh, Murphy Brown's baby on the show Murphy Brown, too. Oh, my God. When he was an infant. Oh, oh I'd hope so, not the remake. <laughs> hey, Murphy, I'm your baby! <laughs> Where? Yeah, hey, what about hey, Robert Rodriguez is calling? Hold on. <laughs> I need a I need to breastfeed. Uh, rip those things out. Uh. Spy men? Sure, sounds good. <laughs> oh god. Oh. Uh, he's he's the baby from uh, Roger Rabbit, apparently. Yeah, where's Uncle Edgar? Ah, uh, he's as stiff as his uh, as his uh, Charlie McCarthy. Huh? Uh. <laughs> I like how you gave up on that one. For those of you that. Uh, for those of you that are ancient like me, apparently, uh, Murphy Brown's, uh, well, not uh, Candace Bergen's father, not, Mur- not the character Murphy Brown, uh, Candace Bergen's father was Edgar Bergen, who uh, was a famous radio ventriloquist. What? Which I still think is fucking hilarious. How hard would it be to be a ventriloquist over the radio? <laughs> Oh my god, that's awesome. But yeah, his name was Edgar Bergen, and his uh, his puppet's name was Charlie McCarthy. Oh, I didn't know he did Charlie McCarthy. Yeah. And yeah. then his uh, his brother actually was uh, Berger Bergen, who uh, was the inspiration for The Swedish Chef. That's exactly right. Who who is a on-TV puppet, which is a, gr- a step up from the radio puppetry. Right. 
I mean, he appeared on on in like I think maybe in movies and a little bit on TV after TV became a thing and probably live shows as well. Like, you know, by all accounts, he was a good ventriloquist. But yeah, he would do his show, his radio show. And it's like, I always wondered, did he have the puppet in his hand while he was doing the radio show? Like, like did he just like do the voice? <laughs> or like, or did he fully commit and like the puppet was there too? Yeah, like the Dennis Miller uh, thing with Norma. Yes, yes. That's a, I like how Dennis Miller, like he has like the perfect body. He's like, you know, I, I wouldn't be shocked if Norma actually had a puppet on his head when he did this just to fuck with us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, uh, the anti-Semitic puppet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he, he, why, I mean, he thought about burning him, but he said, two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> that was the best episode ever. Oh, uh, anytime he gets together with with Dennis Miller and uh, Dana Carvey, Dave, or David Letterman, because he kind of feels like he looks up to them and he's trying to impress them, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, Letterman too, for sure. But it's great yeah, when it's the it. three of them. When it's like when it's Miller and Norm Macdonald and Dana Carvey, because he'll try to impress Dennis Miller and he'll just shit on Dana Carvey. Or not Dana Carvey? I mean David Spade. Yeah, David Spade. Yeah, David yeah. Spade. yeah. I, I figured that's what you meant. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, always good. But yeah, so um, this uh, this these the kids kid from Spy Kids. Yeah, the kids from Spy Kids. And uh, the son from How I Met Your Mother, the one that, uh, you know, that's another thing that's fucked. <laughs> I know we keep going in divergent uh, paths and everything, but you've got the, so on How I Met Your Mother, uh, Ted Mosby played by, oh, I can't think of the guy's name, but anyway, dude, the guy that played him, the guy that's always going to be known for that and is never going to do another acting career in his life and doesn't need to because I'm sure that that show made him so much money. Hey, wouldn't it be great if that was his goal, just to get on like one like series, and then just he just wasn't it for the money? He's like, yeah, I have enough. <laughs> it's still in syndication. He's still getting checks from that fucking show. But anyway. yeah, so that'd be kind of cool if he's like, yeah, I don't ever kind of you know give up on acting when I started doing the shit show. I I've never seen the show. I assume it's a shitty show. I actually like, yeah, really I like the show, up. but oh, I don't know. Maybe it's good. Probably not. I don't think you'd like it, but I like it. Yeah, it's... Oh, actually, I meant to mention this when we were talking about the um, celebrity kiss list. Mm -hmm. I feel that I should make a website, and nobody steal this idea, by the way, where I can just, like, if I want celebrity news, I get to pick which celebrities I get news about, because, you know, I don't need to know about these other celebrities. I don't want to learn new celebrities. Oh, my God, that's a really good idea. <laughs> and then, like, uh, then, like, if I got, like, the... Like, if, like, like it's, like, say, it's, like, oh, Keanu Reeves and, like, this new person, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll follow. You can add them to your, you know, cult, or what do you call it, um... Oh, shit, I forget the word. Curated, uh, you know, collection list uh -huh. of celebrity news. Yeah, the, who you're stalking or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, you, you, you might like, like some really obscure celebrity, like, you know, like, oh, I, I like the author William Gibson. Mm -hmm. And there was an article about him in the New Yorker this week. It was really good. It was a really long article. I liked it, you know, talk about, you know, his life and stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, but if it was just like the regular news feed, that would never come up ever. Like, I'd never see a William Gibson article. That's a fucking brilliant idea, man. Yeah, cut this part out, then. Yeah, I'm going to edit this out, and then we're just going to do this. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Uh, all right. So, um, I don't know. Oh, yeah. So they're going to a house. So they go to this house where, you know, it's uh, one of the kid's parents is a real estate agent. And uh, anytime she's, you know, she's got a house on the market that's empty, they use it as a little clubhouse thing. And. You know, they, they're drinking fucking beers and they're smoking cigarettes. It's a, it's a real stand by me situation. Up there. Right. They, and they've and got, they, he's like, yeah, go ahead. He's really like the kid that no one likes or he's like new to the situation. Cause he like declines. He's like, Oh, I'm not thirsty. You know, he declines the beer yeah. and all that shit. Well, his name is Gabe too. So that's, no, nah, that's not, yeah, that's, that's no good. Yeah, so they uh, they bust out a Ouija board, which I was talking to my wife about this. I've never actually seen a Ouija board outside of a store. Have you ever uh, tampered with a dark art? No, I've never used a Ouija board either, but my wife has and has some interesting stories. See, I feel, and I'm pretty sure it's been proven, that it's just people moving it, whether, you know, consciously or not. Yeah. But I did see a guitar once that like, was made out of a Ouija board. It looked pretty sweet. That is pretty cool. 
Yeah, but yes, so they're using it, and of course they go, oh, who's going to die? Is someone going to die within the year? And he goes, yes, and they go, who? And it smells like Gabe, and then, uh, you know, he's all freaked out. And they clearly just don't like this. Yeah, he falls over when he first gets there, uh, which becomes important later. And um, then it's one of the weirdest edits ever. Because he's like, it spells out his name, and he goes, oh, man. And then it just hard cuts to his mom. Uh, this is obviously like much later and he's coughing and everything. And he's like, Oh, I'm going to die. You know, kind of thing. He's, he's convinced that he's yeah, going to yeah, die. She's, yeah. She goes, Oh, you've had a fever for a week. I'm taking you to the hospital. I'm like, what the fuck? He's had a fever for a week and you're not at the doctor right now. Seriously. <laughs> it's a long you, you probably, time. You probably went, that's a, it's a, it's a long time. I yeah. mean, at least I mean, I assume she went to a doctor, I, but it doesn't sound like it because, we find out uh, later that the father's wealthy, and he basically donates to the hospital to get, like, you know, quick surgery. Yeah, the father is uh, Nestor Carbono, who is on Lost. Yeah, I would say, speaking of uh, Keith Ledger, he's the mayor in uh, the Batman, the Dark Knight, and the Dark Knight Rises. That's I, 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 was kept, yep. I kept trying to figure out who he was. Like, oh, he's the mayor in something. I don't know what it was, and, <laughs> but that, yeah, that's what it was. He's the mayor of Miami, Florida. <laughs> No, I, it was some other show. I thought he was the mayor. They're like, oh wait, no, someone else was the mayor on that show. And they never. I thought he was on the Wire, but they never. They only ever really showed Carcetti and the the one before him. But oh, okay. yeah, that's what he was from. Yeah, yeah, The Dark Knight and Lost. I, he's probably my favorite character on Lost. I've heard good things about Lost, but I've never seen it. I don't think you'd like it. Yeah, I don't think I would either. It's too. There's too much frustration in Lost. I heard it doesn't really pay off at the end, so a lot of it. Yeah, it's. I didn't mind the ending, but a lot of people don't like the ending, and, and I get where they're coming from with not liking it. Like, isn't it like they're dead the whole time, but they or they weren't dead the whole time? Because a lot of people were like, oh, they're dead the whole time. Like, no, no, that's not it. But then, like, oh, yeah, they were actually. No, they're not dead the whole time. Like, the stuff that happens is actually happening. Like that, so they caught the last episode because, mm-hmm. you know, why not watch the last episode and not know what the fuck happens? Sure. <laughs> but no, yeah, they're I not I like to do that. I did, not, a, I did a little side film, too. It, oh, so do they all die at the end? No, they all die at different times. But they weren't dead the whole time? Like, they were, how are they interacting with each other then? I, I'm, if you don't mind quickly breaking down Lost. <laughs> so basically... Um, because a lot of people interpreted it that way, where they're like, "Oh, they die. They're dead. The whole they were dead the whole time." And it's like, "No, they weren't." Because there's dialogue in it that makes it very clear. Um, so everything that happened th- to them on the island actually happened. Like, you know, that was their real life. They crashed. They all came together. Um, you know, they did these things. Some of them eventually left the island. Some of them, you know, stayed on the island and. You, you know they they lived their lives and they they all died at different times. The the last se- the whole last season there's a like a they, what they call because they throughout the show they'll do they would do like flashbacks in like the first season and then they start doing like flash forwards uh, as well like showing to the future like like intercut. The last season they did this stuff they called flash sideways and basically what it was is the afterlife after they had all died. Now they they all like I said they all died at different times so they all lived an actual life, um, but they they all came back together in the afterlife because they were all very important parts of each other's lives and, and things like that. Uh, so that's that's what the explanation for that was. But like, was the island actually like? prohibiting them from leaving and shit or is that like part of like the afterlife there's yeah the like the island is basically the island is basically like the source of all life on earth basically there's like there's a a a well there's like a place on the island that needs to be protected from the forces of evil and there was this dude on the there's these two people on the island one's light and one's dark basically um and the light one is protecting it from the the dark person. If the basically if uh, the dark guy, uh, the smoke monster, um, takes over the like the well, then all of Earth and humanity will die out. Basically, is kind of the the mythology of the show. So this guy, the light guy, knows that he's getting towards the end of his life because they're not net like 
the island allows him to live longer lives than normal, but not forever. So he caused the plane to crash because, you know, one of the people on the plane would be worthy to take over his thing. And the numbers that come up all the time um, are basically, they represent different characters. So like Jack and Sawyer, and I can't remember all the different ones. Hurley, I know is one, um, but they're all candidates to take over caretaking the island and protecting it from the, this dark force basically. And that's kind of like the ultimate answer to everything in the show. Gotcha. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so uh, in this episode, <laughs> so, so the kid gets, the kids get super sick and uh, they take them to, uh, she takes them to the hospital and Cuddy, is telling House, you know, hey, this kid's got, uh, you know, breathing problems. Um, you know, she ta- talks about the the x-rays of his lungs and everything and the uh, intubates and, and every, or not, uh, the uh, whatever. I can't remember. But the um, infiltrates uh, and everything. And he's like, yeah, it's pneumonia. Basically, he says, yeah, it's pneumonia. Whatever. I don't care. And she, he, she says, uh, you know, he's got a rash in his arm. And House correctly identifies the kid as the children of donors. <laughs> and he's like, must be a yeah. real big donor, you know, cause uh, you want me to do this and it's a pretty easy case. But she yeah, says, funny, they, they first say he has a rash. He's like, well, it's, it's normal for that age, you know, just lay off a few days and you'll, it'll go away. Mm. So, you know, it's on his arm. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, Oh, you know, uh, whatever. If it's dry, keep it wet. If it's wet, keep it dry. Um, you know, if he's it's, basically just talking about how useless like a uh, dermatology, dermatology seems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he definitely has a low opinion. So uh, she's like, uh, you know, it's it's a pustular rash rash or whatever. Like it's a it's a different kind of rash. So um, he says, oh, you know, OK, well, I'll, I'll do it as a favor for you. And she's like, no, no, the rash is intriguing to you, isn't it? So um, he takes the case and Trying to think before, I think before they even do any diagnostic stuff. Leave a like. What do you got again? <laughs> <laughs> Is that Thor? Yeah, that was uh, that was an Asgardian <laughs> telling, reminding you to leave a like. But um, uh, I think before they do any kind of like big diagnosis, uh, somebody walks into the room and says, uh, eh, speaking of Asgardians, says, uh, you know, hey, how's it going? And uh, Dr. Chase says, oh, hey, it's you. Uh, I got to go. Or no, they do. That's right. They do um, some of the differential because uh, actually, uh, yeah, it's that happens in a little bit. Not right away. What do they think it is at first? I'm trying to remember. They like um, He's like, what kind of pneumonia f- could it be? You remember the dad thinks it's like some kind of weird like uh like disease that's mostly found in Southeast Asia? Like uh, two different diseases. They're like what? He's like looked on WebMD or something like that. Yeah, the dad's like it could be um tularemia or I don't remember the other one that he says. Something with an uh, L. Yeah, uh le- leishmaniasis. Yeah, I think the first thing he uh, they think is it's anthrax. Yeah, well they find out, so they they biopsy the they biopsy the lung, right? No, they biopsy the um the uh the pustule Bottle? on his arm. Oh yeah. And they look they look uh you know at it and everything and they're like, "Huh, you know, it's you know, it doesn't look good." And Chase goes to Chase finds out that um you know that he was at this place. So he goes and looks and he picks up some insulation and they look underneath it and he says, uh, you know, what is this? Is this cotton? What's going on here with this? And House looks at it and he goes, it's animal hair, some kind of animal hair for this insulation. And they right. do, he's like, he, he kind of looks up and he's like, get another CT scan. Uh, so they get another CT scan and he looks and he's like, yeah, um, why don't you tell me why uh, we should be incredibly frightened right now? Right. And they're looking around and, and she's like, oh, like Cameron is the first one to notice this. And she goes, it's weird that Foreman doesn't notice it. But I mean, I guess he's a neurologist, but uh, but he's supposed to be yeah. clearly the smartest one. Um, 
He takes. Well, I think they're trying to concentrate on uh, Chase this episode because he, it's probably some contractual thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because he definitely takes a back backseat to Chase uh, and even Cameron. Yeah, or, or maybe even the writers are like, well, like we gotta do something with this Chase guy. He just kind of like shows up and like supports House all the time. That's all he does, right? So she's like, oh no, you know what the fuck are we gonna do? And uh, Foreman is the one that has to ask because the audience obviously doesn't know what they're talking about. Foreman's got to be like, well, what is it? And uh, House says it's anthrax. So. Well, He's, oh, actually, another funny thing about that that I forgot to bring up was, uh, like, when uh, Chase goes to the house, like, the kids are there, and, like, he kind of asks where he fell and that kind of stuff when he gets a sample. Mm-hmm. But then, like, the cops show up, and the kids run out, and then Chase also runs out of the house. Yeah, because he's also it's there like, illegally. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? You're a doctor. You can explain. Right. But, uh, but yeah, because it's not like breaking into someone's actual house. Like, no one lives there. Right. Um, well, I, I, I would like to see if there's an episode where they ever get caught breaking and entering. I assume there is. I, I don't think so, actually. It's so weird. I don't think there is. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, he's like, like Cameron's like, it can be transmitted by animal hair, which is true. Usually uh, alpaca, I believe, I think, and camel, uh, partially because of uh, the types of hair and the area of the world. But I think alpaca especially... Uh, can transmit anthrax because it's a, it is, as they point out, a naturally occurring thing. Um, yeah, I always knew. I think cows have it a lot too, actually. Yes, yes, that's true. I always knew alpacas were a shitty version of llamas. Now I have a uh, proof. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so they said, you know, he's probably got this. Uh, now the guy that came in uh, with the uh, somewhat Australian accent. Uh, turns out to be Chase's father and Chase and his father have issues that they don't want to talk about. Apparently. Yeah. Chase doesn't say it's his father, but house like quickly, very quickly deduces that this is his father. Yeah. And house oh. wants to know what the fuck's going on between the two of them. Right. He's a more interested in that than the case. Mm-hmm. Oh, for um, sure. Do you, I don't remember the name of the actor who plays Chase, uh, Chase's father, uh, but <laughs> you'll never guess where I recognize him from. Hmm. Uh, remember, I don't know. Do you remember the uh, the '90s show, The Pretender? He was on that. He was. He was like the guy who was like the the guy who was like uh, instructing the main character. He's like a psychologist slash you know father. Okay. Yeah, that that was a pretty bad show, but he was on it. I know his name is uh, Patrick uh, Bachow, I think, something like that. Yeah, I think that's right, yeah. He's actually Czechoslovakian, which which they mention. Yeah, yeah which is interesting because uh, House like, immediately goes, oh, you're uh, Czech with about 30 years of living in Australia. He's like, yeah, he's very, very good deduction. Doctor. Right. But, uh, but yeah, so he's, uh, he's a transplanted Asgardian. <laughs> but he... Um, so uh, he goes to Wilson and says, hey, you know, what's going on with this? And Wilson's like, why don't you talk to, you know, the actual people involved in this? And so he says, OK, you know, he he he, he gives a very interesting analogy where he says, you know, if you want to find out how two chemicals react to each other, you don't talk to them. You just put them together and apply heat. So he brings the father in for the differential diagnosis uh, with them. He's basically forcing them to interact because he wants to see, you know, what's going to happen between the two of them. Yeah, which makes no sense. He's just like, ah, you're a doctor here now. Why not? I yeah. mean, there's this, like, he doesn't sign anything. He doesn't, you know, he, who knows if he's, you know, goes by our HEPA laws and that kind of shit, you know? Yeah, he clearly has no permissions in the hospital. But, I mean, I guess as long as he's not... Although we see him with the patient later, which clearly he shouldn't be with, It's I guess it's fine to consult, like, to just basically give your opinions, but he can't actually perform any procedures like, or order yeah, anything. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's... A, but he's like a world-renowned, uh, what is it? Um, rheumatologist. Rheumatologist? Yeah. Which is autoimmune diseases, I, I take it? Yeah, same specialty as Cameron. Yeah, but he's like, he literally wrote the book on many of these diseases. Like, House is actually kind of a fan of his. He has one of his books. He yep. reads it at one point and kind of laughs. He goes, I forgot how funny. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly trying to get under uh, Chase's skin, but still, also, he does have a real admiration for him. So he uh, he says that with the the pustule not turning black, which it normally would, 
with anthrax that it's probably sarcoidosis uh, and they should, which is uh, autoimmune disease, uh, which basically just causes swelling, uh, kind of generalized swelling in the skin and the... Yeah, uh, because his throat starts to swell up really bad. Yep. So they uh, they put him on, uh, I think, Leviquin. Um, I think you're... Yeah, yeah, it's a very interesting sequence, too, when he starts with his throat closes up... Uh, uh, they try and intubate him, and the tube's too big because his throat, you know, he's a child and his throat's small. So yep. they're like literally on the verge of giving a tracheotomy when, uh, when Foreman, like, you know, you know, being the great doctor he is, just perfectly gets the right one in there at the last possible second. They even like yep. cut his, like, they scratch his throat with a skull. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't notice this. Did they, like, did they wipe it with alcohol before he went to cut into it? I, I didn't see that. I think they did, but I'm not sure. You definitely yeah, I mean, would. Oh, yeah, I imagine. Unless you want your patient to die of a, uh infection. Yeah, except for the episode of MASH when I think one of them did it with, like, a pen knife or something like that. Yeah, well, I guess sometimes in emergencies, like, if you're, you know, whatever, like, uh, away from, you know, a, a actual yeah. surgical place, you'd have to, but... Sure. But, yeah, so um, they start treating him uh, with uh, um, uh, anti-inflammatory drugs. I believe, like I said, I believe Leviquin. And he starts to get better. Um, like, you know, the swelling starts to go down and everything. Uh, and, and another important uh, thing we forgot to mention is uh, the, the father, when he's explaining, you know, how he basically bought his way into like, you know, ideal Medicare, you know, mm-hmm. or medical care rather. Yeah. He, he mixes, yeah, I had carpal tunnel syndrome. I came in here, you know, they kept telling me it would go away. I had to pay my wrists. Yep. I came in here, they diagnosed it right away. I got surgery that afternoon. So he, he, you know, he's definitely taking advantage of his donation. I mean, he really is just like, buying great medical care, you know, with his daughter. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, they, uh, you know, his, his conditions improving chase says it can't be this, um, you know, like, uh, you know, it's still gotta be anthrax. Uh, maybe there's a neurological symptom to it. Um, you know, and all this different stuff. And he says it can't be, you know, he wants to prove his dad wrong. So he starts running, uh, different ANAs, for for different autoimmune diseases they're all coming back negative his dad says well you can't trust ANAs all the time they're not 100 percent accurate although they're pretty damn accurate most of the time and house keeps saying but he's getting better you know so i mean it must be you know it's working so it must right. be that and um you know he's like look this if it's you know if it's anthrax it's an infection you know and everything then um you know it's gonna the anti-inflammatory drugs suppress the immune system which is why they work for you know uh, autoimmune diseases, but um, they're going to, you know, they're going to open them up for infections, and uh, sure enough, he starts getting um, starts getting these like pustules all over his body, and they're not sure exactly what it yeah, is. It's a very like like yep. I think Chase doesn't even know what it is. He's like he or no Foreman doesn't know what it is. He's like yeah, I've never seen this before. Yeah, Foreman's just like like this is the the one time I've seen Foreman like at a loss. Like he just and the, uh, Omar Epps is really good at this. Like he really sells it because uh, they're like, "What's wrong?" And like Foreman just looks. He's like, "I don't know." <laughs> like this is fucked up, you know? Right. <laughs> oh, but yeah, go ahead. But yeah, then uh, so House uh, you know talks to uh, Wilson because mm-hmm. he he noticed that. Uh, he noticed that uh, his father, Rowan, uh, Chase's father, mm. has a little blue uh, like tattoo mark, which he re- recognizes as a radiation treatment. Yep. And also, he was eating very healthy. He was eating like you know a macrobiotic type of diet earlier, like yep. you know which you know caught uh, House is odd. So he talks to Wilson, and Wilson goes, "Yeah, I'm treating him, you know, for lung cancer." And he and he, he confronts him. And he goes, "Yeah, he has about three months to live." He, actually, I'm sorry, Wilson doesn't say that, but he kind of infers it. So he goes and talks to uh, Rowan, and he goes. Yeah, I have lung cancer. I have about three months to live, and he doesn't want Chase to know because he doesn't want to really have some artificial, like you know, moment type thing. Yeah, because it turns out that uh, the dad left the mom uh, about fifteen years ago, I guess, and uh, about five years after that, the the mom died. Uh, she was a horrible alcoholic. Apparently, according to the dad, she was already like sort of you know going downhill. Away, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, Chase is mad because he left her to take care of her basically instead of taking him with him. And there's no, 
you know, we don't get like we don't get any explanation, which we don't really need, but we don't get any like, you know, like real reason why uh, he didn't try to take uh, him with him. But, you know, that's that's how it went, which I really like. I like that it doesn't like, you know, delve into like a soap opera where he's like, you know, telling this or really it's really very realistic. Like mm-hmm. people have grudges and that's how they work in real life sometimes. It's, yep. it's really well written part. I yeah, I, I totally agree. It's a, it. Like you said, it's a very real life and believable scenario. You know, the the marriage was bad because of her, you know, substance abuse problems. And finally, he couldn't take it anymore. And he was like, OK, you know, we're getting divorced. and I'm 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 leaving. Um, and, you know, I'm sure it was probably a painful decision to leave his uh, his children because we find out later that Chase has a, a brother. So to uh, the two kids, uh, you know, with her. Um, but that's what I that's find a little odd about this. Mm-hmm. Is I feel this kind of contradicts what we already know about Chase because he we they mentioned several times ahead that he basically doesn't need to be a doctor for the money because he's like wealthy from like you know his family mm-hmm. yeah but if he's estranged from his father is the wealth from his mother's side then I guess I mean I don't really know I mean that I mean I guess you would have to assume that because if he's not talking to his father for like ten years how is he getting this money yeah so I believe uh his mom's family had money like uh his dad his dad obviously is you know fairly well to do as well because he's a world renowned doctor but his mom sure. was like her I, I think if i remember correctly and and i think over the years we learn a little more about this but his her his mom came from money basically okay, um, yeah that makes sense then. and when I'm she died yeah when she died she left it to her two sons so well, that's fair yeah so after this um they go in. The kid's coughing now. Yeah. Not only is he coughing, but he, like, he he's losing feeling in his hand because he he asks for some water and mm-hmm. uh, Chase gives it to him and he just drops it right on the floor. You know, he can't even grasp it. Yeah, he can't close his hand. And he starts to like the you know we we kind of like dissolve cut to uh, the fact that he's getting worse because he can't move his hand or his forearm now, and uh, on, yeah, the, so on the right side, yeah. And so now Chase's father goes, you know, you're probably right. You thought it was this mul- multiple neurofibromatosis thing. Mm-hmm. So House is like, okay, we'll do another CT scan. On the, I mean, obviously this is an emergency situation, but they're very, like, loose with, like, the fucking radiation in this hospital. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, holy hell, like, uh, Cameron and Chase and Foreman must be glowing at the end of the night. I mean, they just do so many, like, tests. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, but then the CT scan shows that his brain's perfectly fine. That it's not this uh, mm-hmm. multiple neurofibromatosis, which I assume would show up on a you know head head. Right. So they're kind of thinking like maybe like something set off this anthrax. Like they think you know maybe when they started giving him the uh, the medication, like it, it allowed the anthrax to like bloom because it, like it, the for some reason this particular drug would cause like a like a hostile reaction with the antibodies. It would actually attack his body. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so they're you know they're talking about this a little bit, and then like he, he goes with his dad for some reason, and he sees his wrist still hurts, so he he knows it wasn't carpal tunnel. So he goes, you know, you got to tell me the truth here. You were in Asia, and we, we I don't think we mentioned this, but the son like is very proud of his father because he says he was a test pilot. Well, it turns out that he actually was not. He was over in Southeast Asia trying to like you know find a guru to like help settle like his you know life problems, and he mm-hmm. got taken for his money, and you know he he left. He was never a test pilot, which you know kind of breaks his son, son's heart right in front of him. Yep, exactly. But yeah, because House figured it out because he, you know, a lot of people wouldn't n- even know to look up le- leishmaniasis or, um, you know, the other one that I can't think of now. But, um, you know, they're both very common in Southeast Asia. So he's like, you must have been there at some point. So, yeah, he says he was in India and everything. And House figures it out. He knows he knows be- based on those clues. He knows what it is. And he says, here's a hint. Uh, if I were Jesus, curing this patient would be as easy as turning water into wine. And Foreman right. jokingly says, demonic possession. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty great. <laughs> but yeah, then Chase, uh, you know, of course, because it's a Chase episode, yep. the first one, guesses that it's leprosy. Yep. And then House goes, yeah, the father had it, but it's progressing slower. And, you know, the son must have had it and since he's younger and, the, you know... His immune system, you know, isn't as strong. Uh, he, he got this anthrax because it was suppressed by the uh, leprosy and then it kind of like went out of control. Yeah, which is exactly what would happen because you wouldn't not, you wouldn't use Levaquin, um, you know, for, for leprosy. Obviously, it's rare. 
rare condition, but oh, um, sure. you wouldn't, uh, you know, you wouldn't use those types of uh, of drugs on it uh, because of the way. Because, like, as House points out, it's almost an, it's kind of an autoimmune disease in, in a way, not exactly, but it's it's close. Um, right, it mimics basically the sim- symptoms, is what he was saying. Yeah, um, and so they they send up for some thalidomide. Uh, which you know is the appropriate uh, um, appropriate. And I think uh, it was approach. actually. I, I think it's true that there is only one like leper colony, but I, I don't think they call it leprosy. It's like the official name. Yeah, and I think it is in Louisiana, and I believe they have a mu- museum too. Again, it's not leprosy. They call it the. I think there's a more technical term mm-hmm. that like they have a museum in the same town. I could be wrong, but I think that's. No, I, I I agree. I believe that, as far as I remember, I believe that's uh, that's completely accurate. Um, yeah, Han- Han- Hansen's disease, I know is, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of what, uh, if there's another name they call it, but I know they, I know they call it Hansen's disease, like a, a more, you know, kind of, um, less, uh, you know, loaded word. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. So they, I don't know if they, can they cure leprosy? <laughs> I don't really know, but they, they give him this treatment and they give the father the treatment. Then, uh, Chase, you know, he was, he, he talks to the kid about his dad. This is like the aha moment of the show. It's like, you know, you know, no matter what your dad said, you know, he's your father. You have to love him. So he, you know, kind of realizes, oh, yeah, shit, he's my father, too. So mm-hmm. he tracks his dad down right as he's getting to a cab. He goes, hey, you know, uh, you know, do you want to go, go out for a drink? And his son's like, ah, you know, the dad's like, no, I'm sorry, I really have to go. He's like, well, next time in Australia, I'll see you. You know, they have a handshake and then a nice hug. And the father, of course, knows the whole time that he he's going to not make it to this next meeting because it's like next autumn, he says. Yeah. And it's clearly in the winter. But I mean, you know, he doesn't say anything. So I think it's it's a it's a good moment for the father's character. He has like a perfect like you know moment. It's not forced. He doesn't have. A, you can tell he doesn't want his son to be like all over him because he knows he's dying. He wants him to have a genuine like you know re- reconciliation, not like you know some like oh you're sick. You know, let's let's forget everything kind of thing. Right. Yeah. It's it's interesting. Like that could, that didn't necessarily bother me, but like um when he said. When he said, when are you going to come down? And he was like, uh, probably next autumn. I was thinking, for what? Autumn for where you're living or autumn for Australia? Because it's different. Yeah, that's true. As Yahoo Sirius <laughs> taught us, when it's winter here, it's summer there. Exactly. It's the opposite uh, It's the opposite season. So I wasn't sure. Like, he could have just given a month, and then that would have yeah, been. He, but, he, but he did say next autumn, so even if it was like a month away, he meant like you know thirteen months ago. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, um, yeah, it was clear that he he was talking about sometime in the uh, in the future. But um... yeah, and then one of my favorite parts of the show is when they go to the clinic. I just love that for some reason. Mm-hmm. And this one was hilarious because like uh, Chase like reassigns himself to clinic duty, which every everybody in the show hates. And for some reason, Wilson's doing clinic duty, which I don't th- see why he would have to do it because he's like you know. Head of oncology. Yeah, House either because House is also a department head. I, I think it yeah, is well, weird it's really for punishment, but maybe it's like you know part of like a mission. Like everyone you know does the same thing. I guess I don't know. I guess I don't know. It was almost like this old guy, like his wrist hurts, and like <laughs> House yes. is busted, and then like the rest of the team busted. And they just like start talking about the other patient, and the, and the old guy, like his reactions are priceless. Like he's making these faces in the background. He's like, "You're not talking about me, are you?" And, like they're like they don't even acknowledge. Yeah, because he's like at one point he's like he's like all this and a twelve year old uh, male, and he's like you're not talking about me, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then like they're like, leaving, and like the house just goes, oh yeah, your wristwatch is too tight. And sure enough, that's what's causing. Yeah, he's like I can't feel my fingers, and he goes, I like how they your wrist is your watch is on too tight. I like how they keep like <laughs> implying that the uh, the people in the clinic are like just idiots. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I guess they're kind of making a comment on like people who just go to like the ER, or, like you know, for like. A headache. I mean, obviously, sometimes it's very important to, but like you know, there was an episode of ER where a guy just had like a migraine, like, like sets off this like fire alarm because he has a migraine. They have to evacuate the hospital. Yeah, it's like I think that's just like a comment on that whole phenomenon. Yeah, agreed. Uh, well, by all means, if you feel that you need to go to the ER, go to the ER. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I like this episode. I mean, I'm not a big Chase fan. Uh, my wife uh, realized that he looks like uh, one of her favorite actors, so uh, she, I think she's coming around to being a, more of a Chase fan than I am. Which actor? Um, Michael Pitt. Oh, okay, yeah. A little bit, yep. I can see that, yeah. But yeah, so I, I like the episode. I mean, I'm not a big Chase fan, but I mean, it was a good I mean, it was a good episode about him. You know, I mean, it's kind of corny how he just happens to get all the diagnoses in this one. You know, he has, his father's there. I mean, so why not step up all the time, but... <laughs> 
It's gonna <laughs> right. But oh, now that my dad's here, I could be a fucking doctor. It's like no, you're you're part of the best medical team in the country. <laughs> yeah, I um, you know, it's it is funny because now that I think about it, yeah, it's definitely more than even implied that that uh, house um has a great respect for Chase's father because uh when for, when uh Cameron asks him why she got the job or you know like why he hired the people he did she's like you just f- hired Foreman because you know he could break in like way back in the first episode and he's like you know he he mentions all the things and he says for Chase he goes I hired I hired Chase because his dad made a phone call <laughs> so it's like he obviously really respected him because he's like, okay, I'll do you this favor. Which is interesting because if he's a strange, he's still like, you know, I, I get it. They might have just came up with this episode, you know, out of like thin air and not really like you know, he figured they'd deal with the rest later. But mm-hmm. if they're estranged and his father made the call, you know, I mean, that's like, you know, a bit, you know, pretty big deal. I mean, clearly Chase would know it, I guess. Maybe he doesn't. Yeah, I, I'm thinking maybe he doesn't. I'm thinking maybe Chase applied and his dad knew he was applying somehow. Like, kind of was, like, keeping tabs see, on him? See, I think it's more that they just kind of, like, retconned it. But, yeah, I guess you could say that's a reason for it. Yeah. But I, I like the episode, too. I, like you, Chase is probably my least favorite character. I grow more fond of Cameron as time goes on. Foreman's probably my favorite of the original team. Yeah. Oh, I, also, I looked it up. Uh, it, the the last leper colony used to be located in Carville, Louisiana, but it's been moved to... Uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in 1999. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But it does still house the museum in uh, Carville, Louisiana. Nice. Yep. That's uh, But that's the episode of House. Uh, definitely a good one. Uh, and then next week, or not, well, we, we'll, be, we'll be on vacation. We'll be back in January. But next episode is when Volger makes his first appearance, uh, Chai McBride himself. And I'm, uh, it's I'm called excited control. To... Yes, correct. Next up, yeah. See, I know you've been looking forward to this, so I'm uh, also looking forward to it, judging by your enthusiasm. Yeah, I like this. I like this storyline uh, with with Volger when Volger finally, uh, like you know, comes into play. I, I like the storyline with him. You know, I bet Chai McBride has like way more money than you would think. Cause he's kind of like always on a show, but mm-hmm. like he's never like the main part really. I mean, maybe a couple times, but he's 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 always working. It seems. Yeah, he's always on a, a TV show or a movie. Like he was in that movie Waiting with uh, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Uh, I like him yeah, a lot. Yeah. yeah, he's good. But that is, uh, that's what we got for you this week. So uh, tune in uh, in January. Have a good uh, Christmas break, everybody. And we will uh, we'll happy see you next holidays time. holidays yeah, for ha- those of you who celebrate. Yeah, happy holidays. Uh, happy. Whoa, whoa! What's with this war on Christmas, Mark? Ramadan. Ramadan. Um, Hanukkah. Hanukkah's there. Yeah, Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa. Kuji Jakalia. Happy Kuji Jakalia, everyone. Mm-hmm. Diwali. I'm not sure who that is. I believe. <laughs> I think that no, was. I, I, I think that was Keith. That was that was uh, Keith. Uh, Keith Ledger's other brother was uh, De- is Diwali. <laughs> uh, yeah. There is a third Olsen, so watch out. Yeah, Eliz- Elizabeth Olsen is the most attractive Olsen. But that's not saying much. She's the only one. She's the only one that actually looks good. Yeah, I mean, we can have different opinions. I don't. I, the 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 twins to me look like monkeys. I think the uh, the Elizabeth does as well. Really, you don't like you don't like the way she looks. I mean, I mean, it, it's it doesn't matter what I think. I mean, I don't find her attractive. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, <laughs> I think she looks similar to the. <laughs> it kind of matters what you think because this is our podcast. Well, I mean, well, I mean, other people, you know, have different opinions. I she's yeah. not attractive to me. She's way too like I don't like women who are like very thin. Like, she... yeah, she's got some curves though. That's the that's the difference. Yeah, I guess. But anyway, uh, think about Elizabeth Olsen during this uh, this holiday season. Uh, happy or if you want to last longer in bed. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, give hey, do your... you know if the Olsons have a brother? Do they? No, I'm asking. Do you know if they do or not? No, I don't know. I don't really keep. I don't keep current with the Olsons. 
Do you remember back, back, back in the heyday of uh, Full House, they had a, a song at the end of, like, I think they did an album, and it was called Brother for Sale, but if they don't have a brother, that whole song's fucking bullshit. <laughs> Here's the Olsen family tree. What the fuck? Why are we going back this far? <laughs> Is it 1800s? It's like, well, I don't, I mean, uh, Andre Mala and Paul Estan Inno Sar. Sarkozy. No, oh, they're they're Isn't related to the they Sar- the kid Ed? They're related to the Sarkozy's. <laughs> Fuck okay. Nicholas Sarkozy. They're related to Nicholas Sarkozy. I don't know who that is. Is he a mobster? No, he's a fucking uh uh president of um fucking Syria or whatever. Or not oh, Sy- really? not Syria, um f- ah. the radio puppet uh union. <laughs> <laughs> he was um oh my god uh president of france he was the the, the oh, okay. f- former president of france i apologize for saying i thought he was in the mafia i i thought that was an italian name no but let's see that, a- angelina jolie's on here and mick jag what the fuck is going on oh my god you found some illuminati shit they're gonna summon the hollywood hangman yeah it that must be what this is because there's like janice joplin's on here Roseanne Cash, Uma Thurman, Nick Carter. Somehow, like, how, what? Is, how is Paris Hilton and Oscar De... Okay, so it's got Paris Hilton, and then there's there's lines to Benji Madden, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Oscar De La Hoya, as if those are her children. I don't know the- Maybe it's just people that have been like... It's probably like a seven degrees of Kevin Bacon thing, because I know she's married or was dating that Benji Madden guy. Oh, it's I called the... It's called the Dating Tree, Olsen yeah, yeah, okay. Sarkozy edition. So they're not related okay. to Sarkozy, but there's some dating going on. Yeah, would one of them date him or something? Uh, I don't know, something like that. Come on, just give me the fucking family tree. That's all I want. Ugh. Well, we'll have to we'll have to cover this. Uh, next year that's it for us uh we will see you next time bye